The iPhone 16s are out. I've watched the first reviews, I've tried one in so, and hear me out. It's not worth it. Apple tried so hard in the event to justify how good of an upgrade the iPhone 16s are. But this has to be the first Apple event in a long time, but it felt boring. I usually watch every Apple event with no distractions, but for this one, I was just ranting on Twitter about how boring the event felt. Wow. I and a lot of people can collectively agree that the iPhone 16s is one of the most boring iPhones in a very long time. There isn't anything that is new, interesting, or groundbreaking. Heck, let me list out what's new with the iPhone 16s, it's not that long. Action button on the base iPhone 16s, a slightly faster chip, bigger battery, slightly better cameras, 4K 120 FPS video on the Pro models, a new ultra wide on the Pro, the capture button, faster wireless charging, literally, that's about it. The iPhone 15s were a boring launch too, but the overall interest around those phones were higher even before the launch compared to the iPhone 16. Usually leaks for newer iPhones gradually come out as the year goes on, and a week before the event we get a bunch of concrete leaks. But for the iPhone 16s, we got a few leaks at the end of last year about the capture button, A18, new camera layout, and that was about it. As 2024 went on, we just got confirmations about those earlier leaks. Heck, there are way more leaks about the iPhone 17 right before the iPhone 16 launched. This is the iPhone 13 Pro. This is a 3-year-old phone, and yet, I don't even care about the iPhone 16. Apple might mislead you in so many ways to even upgrade from the iPhone 15 Pro. It's literally happening in their comparison page. The iPhone 15s apparently don't have Dolby Vision video. Are you sure, Apple, my iPhone 13 Pro has Dolby Vision video? Heck, the iPhone iPhone 12 got it first. Or even the anti-reflective coating which the iPhone 15 Pro has. What the heck? Apple is trying so hard to get a lot of people to upgrade but if you have an iPhone 12 or later, it is not at all worth it. I made a video a while ago where I reviewed the iPhone 15 Pro and there is one thing I kept on repeating on that video. The iPhone 15 Pro felt very similar to my iPhone 13 Pro in terms of the overall experience. And I'm not trying to say the iPhone 16s are a bad set of phones. It'll be a great upgrade for a lot of people who are switching to iPhones or if you're using the iPhone XS, XR, 11, 11 Pro or maybe be the 12 if your battery is wearing out. Let's take the iPhone 16. It is the best base model iPhone we have gotten in a long time. It gets the action button, the new camera control button, a new design which looks similar to the iPhone 10, the A18 chip which finally brings the base model iPhone to be on par with this year's Pro in terms of performance and feature set. Similar cameras to the iPhone 15 but the ultra wide now gets macro support. And that's really about it compared to the iPhone 15. It still lacks promotion which is kind of disappointing but for a lot of people who are using older iPhones it'll be a big upgrade. Grade. I usually recommend last year's Pro iPhone instead of this year's base iPhone, but this year it's really hard to recommend the iPhone 15 Pro unless you really want promotion. But the iPhone 16 Pro seems so boring. It brings the capture button, the A18 Pro, which is 15% faster than the A17 Pro, a new ultra wide, 4K 120 FPS video, which is limited to the main sensor, and that's about it. You can get the iPhone 15 Pro and have the same experience. What? I could point out things between the iPhone 12 Pro, 13 Pro, 14 Pro, and 15 Pro, but there isn't one standard feature that that even calls for an upgrade from the iPhone 13 Pro. But wait, I'm missing out something. The literal selling point of the iPhone 16 is Apple intelligence. Apple spent way more time talking about Apple intelligence instead of these phones. Heck, they said it 41 times in the event. Apple intelligence? Wow. Apple is marketing these phones as iPhone 16 with Apple intelligence. Are we back to those days where 5G was the literal selling point of phones in 2020? Here's the sad part, Apple intelligence is coming out a month after these phones come out in beta. And a lot of features they talked about like personal context, visual intelligence, gen mojis will only come out by December or next year. What? So this iPhone 15 Pro is running the iOS 18.1 beta that is coming out next month to everyone. And this phone has Apple intelligence. Calm I'm down Siri, Siri. Calm I'm down, very calm smart. Down, calm down. There's the new Siri animations, priority notifications, reduced interruptions which are pretty useful, writing tools, memory mixes, message summaries, mail summaries or website summaries, call recording with transcription, cleanup, and really, that's about it. I'm working on a video that's dropping in a few weeks comparing Apple intelligence and Galaxy AI, so a sub to this channel will make sure you're the first one to see it. But why upgrade to a phone that doesn't get the newest features at launch? Heck, some of the capture button features are coming out later this year. Why? Now, Apple intelligence will be good. It looks promising, the feature set is good, and it'll be useful in the real world. But here's the beef I have with Apple intelligence. They're purposefully limiting it from coming to older iPhones. Apple intelligence is only coming to the iPhone 15 Pros and the iPhone 16s, but iPads or Macs that have the M1 chip or later are getting all of the Apple intelligence features. Now the M1 is based on the A14 chip that's on the iPhone 12, M2 is based on the A15 chip that's on the iPhone 13, and M3 is based on the A16 and A17 Pro. They can bring some of the Apple intelligence features to the iPhone 12, 13, 14, 15, but they're trying their very best to call it a RAM limitation. The iPhone 15 Pro was the first iPhone with 8 gigs of RAM. The iPhone 16s across the board have 8 gigs of RAM. Fine, but the 
iPhone 12 Pro, 13 Pro, 14 Pro and 15s have 6 gigs of RAM. I still feel they can bring some of the features to older iPhones like cleanup or writing tools. How much memory are those features really going to consume? Heck, I can use Google Photos on this iPhone 13 Pro and still get Magic Eraser, which performs faster than Apple's cleanup. But here's the bigger problem. Some of these Apple intelligence features run on private cloud compute, so it can run advanced models. If that is possible, why can't those features that use private cloud compute come to older iPhones? Or apparently, call recording is a very intensive feature used by Apple intelligence that it can't be run on older iPhones. Okay, here's an update about call recording. Apple added call recording support to all the iPhones with the iOS 18.1 beta. Let's get back to my run. Apple is purposefully limiting these features to the iPhone 15 Pro and the iPhone 16 to entice a lot of people who probably won't even use most of these features. But they're also dropping these features a month later or even next year so they can get a lot of people to unnecessarily upgrade. Personally, I don't think Apple intelligence alone warrants an upgrade from my iPhone 13 Pro, which isn't getting Apple intelligence. This phone has been the most reliable phone I've owned in a very long time. It has a good set of cameras, battery life that can get me through a whole day, a display that has a high refresh rate and good brightness. I can't point out something bad with this. I can see the same for the iPhone 14s and 15s. iOS 18 on the other hand is a bigger upgrade worth considering. It has a lot of new features, customization abilities, a visual redesign and some performance improvements on older iPhones. It's coming to the iPhone XS and XR from 2018 and I personally think an average user would notice the difference in iOS 18 compared to Apple intelligence. Let's take the iPhone XR for example. This is the oldest and least capable iPhone and it performs decently on iOS 18. There is so much AI being thrown around in the smartphone market that Apple is not the only one. Samsung for example talked just about Galaxy AI in the S24's launch. It's been out for 9 months and barely anyone cares about its AI features. The same could be said for Google, OnePlus, Motorola, Xiaomi who are renaming older features as new AI features. For an average consumer, they will see AI in the box and think it's a new feature when it isn't. AI is seriously ruining phones right now. Companies are using it as an excuse to give zero meaningful hardware improvements and it's sad that this is going to be the case now on. We've technically reached a peak for these flat phones. They're perfect now and as time goes on, companies will just work towards refining them, removing punch holes or stuffing a whole camera into these tiny phones. And I also want to say the iPhone 16 look like a solid set of phones. But please don't make your purchasing decisions solely based on Apple intelligence. If you have an iPhone 13, 14 or 15, there is something exciting to hold out for. It seems like Apple is going to restructure their lineup with a new iPhone Air model which is going to be the thinnest iPhone ever. I hope it doesn't bend. But that is something interesting. Moreover, the base iPhones are rumored to also get ProMotion. At this point, I don't mind switching to the base iPhone 17s because ProMotion is the only thing that's holding me back. But there's also a rumored iPhone Ultra which will pack even better cameras, even more RAM for Apple intelligence. They're also going to make all the cameras higher resolution. So we will probably get 8K video on the iPhone next year. The iPhone 17 lineup looks a lot promising and I did say in my iPhone 13 Pro review that I'll only upgrade next year. Seems like that's perfect timing. Watch this video to find out why the EU laws are ruining tech.